on its cell surface and presents that fragment to a T-helper. That's why it's called an antigen-presenting cell, because it's presenting a piece of the antigen to the T-helper. Okay, that was my question. That's what threw me off the class 1 and 2, because I thought only the class 2 were the ones who put up the flags. So would that be like um, when your body attacks itself with the class 1? No, you'll see it. Okay. I know what you're saying. Okay. The difference is, is that here, the B cell is presenting the fragment, or the APC is presenting the fragment to the T-helper. Mm -hmm. On the cytotoxic side, each tissue cell itself can bring in an antigen, or can be infected, I should say, and present a fragment. So it is its own antigen-presenting cell, if you want to think of it that way. Right? So a virus comes into a normal tissue cell, let's say in the lung, that tissue cell absorbs that virus, right? The virus starts making proteins on the inside of the cell, those proteins are foreign, so those proteins are sent to the cell surface to say, hey, I've been infected. So now that class 1 MHC on a regular old tissue cell will look a little bit different now that it's infected. So then a cytotoxic T cell will come around, notice the class 1 MHC is altered, and then kill it straight out. The entire cell? Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay. In the back. APCs are just, they're just macrophages. So they do it on their own? Yep. They're nonspecific in that case. They just eat whatever's foreign. It doesn't need to be a specific shape like we saw the antibody needed to match to. Yeah, these are great questions. You guys like the, the, the first class I've had so many questions. It's wonderful. Okay. Now, uh, we mentioned these two words for immunocompetence and self tolerance. This is where we learn how to recognize self and how to not attack the self, right? So we don't want uh, cytotoxic T cells recognizing class 1 MHCs and then attacking them, right? That would be horrible. So two things. It seems obvious, but it is two different learnings. It has to recognize the class 1 MHC and then also ignore it, right? Not mount an attack. So that is important. If, in case it does start to mount an attack on a normal cell, other white blood cells around it, other T cells around it, will notice, hey, he's not following the rules. Let's get him. <laughs> and that's what happens. Another cell will come by and put a little protein on its cell surface, tagging it for death. And then a macrophage will come and swallow it. Right? So, yeah, that's happening, like, right now. So, pat yourself on the back for being that cool. It's very cool stuff. There's so much about the immune system that's very much like, uh, you know, actual battle strategy. Okay. So we know what these are. We know what that is. APCs. Now we know all about APCs, right? Let's do the data. APCs can be dendritic cells, which are just macrophages that are all around the body. Activated B cells, we learned that. What do they have? Class 2 antigens, don't they? Class 2 MHCs. Check. Everybody got it? Pew, beautiful. Yes, they do. APCs have class 2 MHC protein complexes on their cell surface. <laughs> That's how the video says it. And what do they respond to? CD4 receptors. See, we can twist these words like a thousand ways. That's why right here, this is you. This is where you're going to swim and know how to put these words together. Written on the board. Okay. When an APC presents the antigen to a cell, what does it do? To the T cell? It activates the T cell. When that T cell has been presented the antigen, it starts activating different things inside the T cell and then they're going to secrete something called cytokines, which are going to be other chemicals that can enable other T cells around them to start acting different. So it's like a priming. Does that make sense? But that only happens when it's getting bound and presented. Right. Right. So in a sense, the T cells are going to mount a bigger response once they're bound. So here's our terms. Our third line of defense gives us either humoral, which is antibody-mediated immunity, and that's for what? 
B cells, or we call cell mediated immunity, and that's what the T cells do. It's just do two different pathways, you could say, for immunity. So, isn't this valuable stuff right there? Yeah. We keep pointing back to it, so I would kind of know that on the board there. This could get you out of the weeds. If you don't understand anything on what I'm talking about today, at least know this screen, on the, oh, excuse me, the board. That can actually mean a lot. Okay, so the antigen binding will trigger what's called a clonal selection, which means that antigen will bind to a certain antibody, right? Or an anti or an immunoglobulin receptor on a B cell, same kind of thing, which will trigger it to do what? Clone, right? The B cell will grow rapidly. Most clones become plasma cells that will secrete antibodies, right? And few clones will become memory cells. Perfect. Now it's getting clearer. So here we go. Pay attention to this picture. There's, there's a lot going on, but if you take it step by step, look at what's happening at the very top of the screen here. That little red dot represents an antigen. Is it binding to each one of those B cells? No. And by the way, notice the Y shape on the B cell. That is an immunoglobulin bound to the B cell, right? That's in a sense an antibody. Okay, immunoglobulin is an antibody. Bound as a receptor on the B cell. Okay? That receptor, notice only the B cell in the middle has the right shape antibody on it to bind to the antigen. Notice the antigens don't bind to the one on the left or right, right? They're ignored because it's not the right shape. So now once it's bound, what happens? It says success, right? We have a, a correct binding, so it starts to clone itself because it succeeded in binding to an antigen. So it wants to clone that. All those clones, some will become plasma cells, right? These plasma cells will secrete those immunoglobulin receptors that were up here. Now it lets them loose in the blood. That's why we call it humoral immunity. So plasma cells lose their receptors that they originally had up there, right? Secrete these antibodies, and then some of that population of clone will become memory. Okay, perfect. So after this, we'll look at the video. On a secondary response, could be years later, months later, now that same shape antigen, right, comes around, binds to the memory cell receptor, immunoglobulin receptor right there, and what happens? Now the cloning is even faster. Look how many clones we get versus the first exposure, right, because it's already primed up. So now look how many more antibodies you get. So what this is really saying is on a first exposure of an antigen, it takes about five or so days before you get actual antibody production. So when you start to get sick, it's usually on that fifth, sixth, or seventh day where you come out of it, don't you? Because your antibodies have reached a good level. But on a second exposure, you can get that same antibody spike in as little as two to three days because of the memory cell. Okay, so that's what, this, um, that's what this graph is about. On a first exposure, here we go, first exposure to the antigen right there. About the fifth day, you get enough antibodies present in the bloodstream to start to make a difference. The antibody production is just slow in this case compared to all the other solutes in your blood. Anyway, on a second exposure, look what happens. Look how much faster it can get, it's called a titer, an antibody titer, T-I-T-E-R, is the amount of immunoglobulin in the blood. So you can see it's much faster and much stronger on a second exposure. Okay, so let's look at um, some video real fast. That was loud. So where I'm going is just here, under the YouTube channel, under Course Home, right? And then the playlists, uh, you just find lymphatics, 
and we'll watch uh, two or three videos. We'll see how much time we have. Yeah, we'll do this one. I must warn you, this guy, he sounds like this. And here is a virgin B-cell family. He's very, very dry. Yes. Okay. You got to say it again, sorry. When that B-cell clone after the binding happened, are we trying to get more antibodies or are we trying to get more B-cell? Like, what's the goal? The, the clone, the cloning that happens is more B-cells. But what that means is those B-cells, normal B-cells, if you saw in the picture, let me go back real fast. Normal B-cells up here, Notice that the antibody is more of like a receptor. It's on the cell surface of the, of the B cell right here. The purpose of cloning is that we can get that same B cell that has the same receptor, right? Right here, notice that this cell and this cell is the same as that middle one right there. So that's the cloning. Now most of those clones want to become plasma cells, which are just another version of a B cell, but without its antibody receptor. We basically let them loose. That's what the antibodies are. Yeah. So all we've done here is take these antibodies, which were bound to the cell as a receptor, and now we've released them. To go bind to the... Yeah, to go bind and agglutinate something else. That they're firing off. Yep. Basically. Yeah. The B cells fire off their antibodies. That's right. And now they can circle around the whole body. Right. right. Since now they're specific for that antigen. Beautiful. Okay. His voice is pretty bad, I'm sorry. Can we turn on the light? I can't see it. Yep. That's the last of the ropes.